Mr. Brady, the Donner Party, and Jimmy Carter are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is May 12th, 2022. It is the 132nd day of the year. We got 233 days left. It's the 19th Thursday in the 20th week and the 54th day of spring. You got 40 days left until summer. If today's your birthday, you're still an emerald and a Taurus. Today is National Limerick Day. So this is really weird. When I was younger, someone told me dirty limericks. I did not know that a limerick was actually something other than dirty limericks. National Limerick Day celebrates the birthday of English artist, illustrator, author, and poet Edward Lear. He lived from 1812 to 1888. Lear is known mostly for literary nonsense in poetry and limericks. The day also celebrates the Limerick Poem. Limerick poems were popularized by Edward Lear's book, The Book of Nonsense, in 1846. A limerick is a very short, humorous, nonsense poem. Within a limerick, there are five lines. The first two lines rhyme with the fifth line, and the third and fourth lines rhyme together. I honestly didn't know until I just read that that there was a like a mathematical <laughs> formula for this. Anyway, today's National Limerick Day. All right, let's see what else. May 12th has given us. 1780, the American Revolutionary War. In the largest defeat of the Continental Army, Charleston, South Carolina is taken by British forces. If you don't know about Charleston, South Carolina, it has Civil War history. It has Revolutionary War history. It's a historic town. One of the most historic towns we have. It's strange. I talk to people. They don't realize that the Revolutionary War came that far. Everyone seems to think it was just in New England. And the other thing is Civil War, everyone thinks it was just done in the South. They don't realize it made it all the way up to like Maryland and stuff like that. Pennsylvania. Gettysburg's in Pennsylvania. 1846, the Donner Party. Pioneers depart from Independence, Missouri for California on what will become a year-long journey of hardship and cannibalism. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. They ate each other when things got rough. So the Donner Party is a very fascinating story in American history. It's always fascinated me and I've watched several things on it. I actually, I think I've read two books, maybe third one. Anyway, it's always fascinated me. The Donner Party, which was actually the Donner Reed Party. There was a family called the Donners and there was a family called the Reeds and a bunch of other people mixed in with them. In the spring of 1846, almost 500 wagons headed west from Independence, Missouri. At the rear of this wagon train was a group of nine wagons containing the Reed and Donner family along with their employees and stuff like that and they left on May 12th. Now back in the day you had to time this perfectly because you were going through mountainous areas that once winter hits they're impassable so you got to get there before the winter hits before the snow hits or you're screwed and you're stuck in like Utah for four months till the passes open up again. Them being the last in the wagon train was they're already in a rough situation. Now the Reed Donner family had a total of 32 people, but as they moved along the wagon train, other groups would join them and people would fall behind and others would stay with them. And by the time they got to Fort Laramie, there was about 87 people. Now, throughout the wagon train, there was rumors of this new trail called the Hastings Cutoff. The Hastings Cutoff would take you south of the Great Salt Lake and kind of give you a straight cut across to Nevada and then on to the Sierra Nevadas, right around Reno, Carson City and all that stuff. Well, back then, everyone took the Oregon Trail and the Oregon Trail, as it gets almost to Salt Lake City in Wyoming, they take a hard right and head north to Pocatello, Idaho, then Twin Falls and come back down. Keep in mind, this is the middle of the 1800s. And after Salt Lake City, you got some pretty serious mountains with no roads. Well, a man named Lansford Hastings decided he knew a better route. He sent riders down the wagon train and started delivering letters to people, telling them and giving them directions about this new new trail and suggested everyone should start taking it. No one was taking it except for the Donner Party. People told them not to take it, but they thought, you know, they'd shave a month off of their trip or whatever. The problem was Lansford Hastings really didn't know. He had never really traveled this route before he started suggesting it. It was rumored and he thought he could do it and a lot of people said it could be done, but he didn't know for sure. Sadly, the Donner Party took his advice, headed through the Hastings Trail and got stuck in the Sierra Nevadas near where Truckee, California is now. So these families are stuck there, their food's running low and people set out on foot to get help. Well, they finally get to California and get some help and the rescue parties that kept trying to go up there had to turn back because of weather. The first rescue party didn't get to them till February. They had run out of food some time in mid-December. Of the 87 members of the party, only 48 survived. 
Now there's a whole bunch that goes into this. And if you don't know about it, it is very interesting. So I'd research it. 1862, the American Civil War. Union Army troops occupy Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 1926, the Italian built airship Norge, I believe it's Norge, N-O-R-G-E, becomes the first vessel to fly over the North Pole. That's interesting. 1965, the Soviet spacecraft Luna 5 crashes on the moon. 2002, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter arrives in Cuba for a five-day visit with Fidel Castro, becoming the first president of the United States in or out of office to visit the island since the Cuban Revolution. 2008, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement conduct the largest ever raid of a workplace in Pottsville, Iowa, arresting nearly 400 immigrants for identity theft and document fraud. 2017, the WannaCry ransom attack impacts over 400,000 computers worldwide, targeting computers of the United Kingdom's National Health Services and telephonic computers. 2018, the Paris knife attack. A man is fatally shot by police in Paris after killing one and injuring several others. Premiered on May 12th, Patrick Melrose. This was a miniseries on Showtime, and it was pretty good. It's a drama, and it's a little depressing, but it was still good. It had Benedict Cumberbatch in it. He did a great job. It's about a guy that's got some serious addiction issues, and he gets word that his father dies, and he has to fly to New York City to collect his father's ashes and go through a bunch of stuff, which sends him into this really dark and depressing spiral. Definitely not an uplifting story, but if you want to see a good drama with some really good acting... You should watch it. Born on May 12th, 1981, Remy Malik. Rami Malik, Remy Malik, whatever it is, R-A-M-I, Malik. He's an award-winning actor best known for his role as Elliot Alderson in the USA TV series Mr. Robot. He also played Freddie Mercury in the 2018 film Bohemian Rhapsody. Where I know him from is the miniseries that was on HBO about the Marines in the Pacific called The Pacific. He played a great part in that. A little weird, but it was pretty good. He was born in my hometown. Yeah, Torrance, California. Uh, when he was young, though, he moved to Sherman Oaks, which is the other side of the Los Angeles basin. But I have to say he is a pretty good actor. Died on May 12th, 1992, we lost Robert Reed, best known for his role as Mike Brady, TV dad on The Brady Bunch. He previously starred as Kenneth Preston in the hit drama The Defenders. He was employed as the city's radio disc jockey after taking a radio and speech class in high school. He married Marilyn Rosenberg in 1954. They had a daughter named Karen before divorcing in 1959. He was gay. He kept that in the closet and he didn't let it out because back in that era, that would ruin someone's career. And he kept it quiet. Florence Henderson and some of the other people in the cast knew this and they never let it out. And it wasn't known till a few years after he died. He died of colon cancer. Now, it came out that he died of AIDS. He did have HIV. He did not die of AIDS. But the doctors did say that the HIV positive status did play a part in his death. He died on May 12th, 1992, at the age of 59 in Pasadena, California. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.